Hello there, and welcome back to the Beanbag. Uh, today we are talking Klingons. Um, Playmates actually made a lot of, of Klingon figures over the years. Um, and I think I've got most all of them. I honestly don't recall. Uh, we'll figure it out as we go. Um, the first one is, of course, from the original series. Captain Koloth. Or no, Kang. Kor? No, this is Kor. I remember now. Koloth is the one that they made uh, for Deep Space Nine. He actually is, I think, the one that I don't have. Anyways, we'll get to that. So, here you've got that original series uniform. Um, actually, it's quite a, quite a decent sculpt of him. Um, funny thing about it is that technically this actor has two action figures of two different characters, because he also played Trelawn in the original series, the uh, sort of Q-like guy that Captain Kirk met. But anyways, what things that's always amused me about these uniforms is how similar they were to the uh, Romulan uniforms that they had in the original series. But yeah, he was the only one of the original series Klingons that they made. They didn't make a whole lot of adversaries for the original series in general, but... Yeah, so there was him. Now, when they got to Next Generation, they, of course, had made Worf, but then they later on made Worf in his ritual Klingon attire, which has this awesome, actually, I think, robe that was made of this vinyl material so it could be taken off. Um, and they kind of did a... I like the paint job that they had in there. Sort of the mix of the golds and the silvers and everything. And... Yeah. But... Uh, there was, of course, in the Wave 1, there was... Galron. The Klingon Chancellor. And... A lot of people complained about this figure. I thought it was actually pretty good. I mean, I will say that the way that he has to stand is a little bit funny... And the fact that his right arm is stuck in this uppercut punching position. I don't know what they were planning for that. Uh, it makes it to where he can't really hold a, a batleth properly. It's very awkward. But then they decided to combine the two. And they did. Galron wearing Worf's clothing. And it's literally just the exact same body as Worf. Uh, they did a repaint on the robe. And they switched the heads. So that it's the combination of them. Um, I suppose, it, you know, I guess my biggest complaint, well, he did wear the uniform like this. You never saw Gowron wearing a baldric the way that Worf did. So, then we get, let's see, there is another reuse of the same body, which is uh, Commander K Korg? God, I am drawing a blank on his name. Uh, from Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock, it was Christopher Lloyd... Which is honestly, I think, one of my favorite looks for a Klingon. Because he didn't have crazy long hair. He had this really interesting updo. Um, and Christopher Lloyd actually played a really interesting Klingon. But again, you see it's the exact same body. And uh, they just made a new head based on Christopher Lloyd to put on top. Uh, then with we'll Star Trek VI, we got... Uh, oh man, his name has suddenly left my head too. Um, well, somebody will definitely write that in the in the comments, I'm sure, because I've gone blank on his name, and he's the main villain of the whole movie, and played by Christopher Plummer. Ah. I always appreciated the fact that 
we got really our first bald Klingon. Um, the f head ridges were a lot more subtle. Sort of reminded you a little bit of the uh, original series Klingons. And it's driving me nuts that I'm drawing a full-on blank on his name. We're going to just move on to the next generation. So in the next generation, uh, we met Ambassador... Wow, I am really missing on these. Uh, Y'all are going to kill me. Kalar. Ambassador Kalar. And for some reason they decided to put her in her her gym outfit. <laughs> this was what she was wearing when she was exercising. Uh, I don't know what was wrong with the other outfits that she wore. They decided to pick this one, I guess, because it was a more action-y scene than the rest of them. Um, I have done a custom of her, though, that we'll see in just a minute. Uh, we then get... Bator and Lursa from Star Trek Generations specifically. Uh, they had appeared in the next generation, I want to say about two, three, maybe four times. I can't quite remember right now. Uh, and then they had also appeared in Deep Space Nine in an episode. And they decided to make them sort of the uh, secondary villains alongside of. Uh, Soren in Star Trek Generations. And they were also some of the only Klingons that we ever saw wearing skirts. Um, which was kind of a nice change. Uh, then in Deep Space Nine, we met... Uh, well, technically we had met him in The Next Generation as well. Uh, Worf's brother, Kern... Uh, but this is his, how he looked on Deep Space Nine, and, and technically he only had his ch shirt open like this for about 15 seconds when he was getting ready to have Worf kill him as part of a sort of a ritual suicide kind of thing. This is one of those that, I'm very conflicted, the head sculpt is great. But the fact that they decided to have the shirt open, which is something that was literally just a matter of seconds in the episode, the paint doesn't match up. Like, it's supposed to be darker brown on other parts of the sleeves, and it's kind of all over the place. This one, the sculpting is fine, but the paint always bugged me. But I've used him for other stuff as well. Uh... Then there was an episode of Deep Space Nine where King Kor and Koloth all come back uh, for a for the assistance of Jadzia Dax, who I include here because she is wearing a Klingon outfit, and uh, uh, her knife is in the bag if you're wondering. But yeah, this is actually a really good one. They it's honestly the head's just a reuse of the former head, but they did make an all new body, which was really cool. Um, and the little knife here thing holder, it is removable, uh, but I don't want to lose that, so I keep that attached. But yeah, nice variation on the Klingon outfit. And then the last one for Deep Space Nine is Captain Sisko in Klingon disguise. And this is actually a really good figure. I'm not too fond of the uh, articulation on the arms especially. But it would have been nice if he'd been able to turn his arms like you did so many of the others. But it's okay. Uh, the head's actually a great sculpt. And... It kind of always bugged me. They could have really just reused this body and made head sculpts for... It was uh, Odo and O'Brien and, and Worf in, in disguise. 
they could have done that, and it would. I mean, they could have at least done O'Brien and Odo. It would have been great, but missed opportunity. That's something that would be cool to see going into the future. Uh, but yeah, this was a really great episode. It's where we find out that General Martok was actually had been a changeling for uh, a significant portion of the Klingon War. And the last of the non-custom figures I've got is from, uh, I believe it was first or second season of Voyager, uh, is when the Vadians split Belana Torres into two parts, her Klingon part and her human part, um, so that they could try and use the Klingon DNA to f- solve the phage. And they made a figure of Belana in this sort of it always seemed like medical fatigues to me. It's hard to describe for sure. Uh, again, this isn't a missed opportunity. They could have easily have made this a two-pack and had human Torres come with this as well. But it's still a really cool figure. It gives us a really good Klingon sculpt, which uh, you'll be seeing again in just a moment. <laughs> so, in of the customs that I have done, the first one is actually using that exact same body. Uh, is Ambassador Kalar. This is based on an outfit that she wore... I think it was her first appearance during the second season of Next Generation. Uh, it was a silver outfit that had this belt going around it. And it's honestly, it's actually a really easy one to do as far as figures go. And it was all silver. Then from, well, here you go, I'll just show, I show you the other Ambassador Kalar, which is also from her first appearance, where she wears a sort of ritual Klingon outfit. Um... What's funny is this obviously uses the same head. The body is from a Bator. The torso is from Bator with the, the tits covered up. And the legs are actually off of that wharf body that gets you got reused multiple times. But it still actually works in proper scale. With everything else. Um... I did do a Kern in his Klingon attire, the way that he's dressed when we first meet him. Uh, This was one of the hardest to get his head to go on properly uh, because of the way that they designed the neck on the, uh, the, the original Kern action figure. But as you can see, this is just the, uh, Gowron body that I reused, did some paint modifications and that kind of thing. Then we also have. So this is a Colonel Wharf from Star Trek VI. Um, this was a reuse of the General's body, and I kind of had to alter the Baldrick on it to look different because. Colonel Worf never wore a Baldrick in the movie, but I did actually take a Worf head, had to cut everything off of the top and the sides, and completely sculpt new hair and new forehead, and keep Michael Dorn's face there and the, underneath it all. But uh, and then I just repainted the uniform to be the gray like we saw him wearing. Uh, then we have General Martok, which is that same Cisco body. Oh, he fixed his hair. Um, and this is actually a Galron head I took and made the eye scarred and completely changed the hair to be more like General Martok's. Um, but yeah, need to do a little touch up there. I don't know what it scuffed up against. 
We then have the Klingon chef. He appeared in two episodes of Deep Space Nine. Uh, really, really big dude. The actor uh, was actually an opera singer. I always thought that was kind of interesting, which is part of why they hired him. Um, but yeah, I can, this is actually all a Kern figure, sculpted over it, textured the shirt to give it that sort of fuzzy look, uh, redid the forehead to more match the forehead of the Klingon chef in the episode. Uh, but yeah. That's the Klingon chef. We then have Mirror Universe Worf. Uh, this is again, it's a Gowron body Worf head that I have sculpted the longer hair onto. And then painted parts of the outfit. He wears a lot more black. I uh, like his, the gauntlets around his sleeves. And uh, his boots and everything. He's a very, very darkened outfit. Then from Voyager, there is, uh, I believe her name was Mural. Or, yeah, that sounds right. Which is... Uh, Torres's mother, we meet her in the episode where Torres feels that she needs to help her get to Graythor on the barge of the dead. Uh, which this is the uh, Torres head reused. And it's honestly because of the fact that I, I really am convinced they use the exact same forehead for her mother. Because um, it's if you compare them, the shapes are almost identical. I could have made the hair longer to match, but I didn't. But the rest is the Dax body. I made the sort of gauntlets around the sleeve and paint and the made the neck piece as well and painted the rest to match as closely. And then the very last one is I just sort of made a generic Klingon mer uh, merchant to go on my, go with my deep space.